can you live off the income from buy to let rental properties? So in this video, I'm going to be sharing how many properties are required for you to be able to live off. I'm also going to be going through some figures and I'm also going to be sharing some valuable information with you if you want to build a buy to let portfolio, whether that is to build long term wealth, to supplement your current lifestyle or replace your current income. So make sure you stick around because there's going to be a lot of insightful information. I want to offer you as much value as I possibly can. Also, if you are interested in buy to let property and property investing and you think you might need my help, what I've done is I put together a short video explaining how I might be able to help you. I put a link to this in the description, so feel free to go and watch that if you think I might be able to help you, regardless of what the issues are. So go ahead and watch that. If you feel you need some more knowledge, then you know where to contact me. Now back to the video, a lot of people ask me, am I doing property full time? Am I living off the income that I receive from my rental properties? Now to answer that, the answer is no, I don't do property full time. I don't feel the need to. So the way in which I structure my property portfolio, I try to be as hands off as possible. The strategy that I use is just buying boring vanilla buy to lets. Sometimes I use the BRRR method to add value to properties. But once I get a tenant in, that property requires very little work. The mortgage payments go out every month. The rental income comes in every month. So in terms of do I live off the profit I make from my rental properties? The answer is no, I don't. But on the other hand, yes, I could. So my rental properties do produce enough profit to cover all of my living costs, my expenses, my bills, my residential mortgage and things like that. However, because I'm always striving for more, I don't rely on this income. I don't use it for that purpose. I'm always trying to grow. I'm always trying to develop. I'm always trying to build my wealth, build my businesses and strive for a better life. Now, for those of you who are wondering how many properties does it take to be able to live off, to be able to supplement your life, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through some figures, some numbers for you now, and then you should be able to calculate or figure out how many is required for you personally, because obviously everybody is different. People live in different areas of the country. Buy to let is different in places, people's mortgages are different, people drive different cars and so on and so on. So what I'll do is I'll run through the average figures, I'll explain what is required, how much initial investment you need to be able to build up a portfolio of properties and how much those properties will make you per month. So as a general rule, what I found is the return on investment, that is how much money you make in regards to how much money you initially put in, I found that with property, with buy to let, especially in the area where I invest in further north, you're looking at realistically around 10 to 15%. So for example, if you put 30,000 pounds in for your deposit, um, solicitor's fees and stamp and things like that, and then you could expect your property to make you around 3,000 pounds per year in profit. Now these are very solid figures. They're not over exaggerated. Um, they're very, very achievable. These are the kind of figures that I look to achieve at absolute minimum. Realistically, you'll probably achieve more. So what you need to do is, you need to understand that for every 30K you put in, you're gonna be making three to 4,000 pounds profit per year. Now, obviously, if you divide that up by 12 months, it will give you your monthly profit. Let's say that each property that you own will make you 300 pounds per month. Now, obviously, to work out how many properties you need, you have to take the figure, your outgoings figure per month. So that is your all of your bills, your outgoings, um, fuel, your residential mortgage, your rental payments. Add all this together so you get a monthly figure. Now let's say that is £3,000 for example. Then if one property is making you £300, then for you to be able to live off the rental income from a buy to let portfolio, you're going to need 10 properties of this level, of this standard. Now you might be thinking that 10 properties is just way out of your reach. There's no way you'll be able to afford it. How are you going to build a portfolio of that size? Honestly, I didn't think that either when I first started out. When you buy your first buy to let property, you've then got a rental income coming in, which you can then reinvest. So each property that you buy, each property that you add to your portfolio, your rental income is accumulating. So the more you get, the faster that is accumulating, which then in turn allows you to buy more property more quickly. So even though you might be feeling stuck at the moment, you might be in a position where you're thinking even one or two properties is out of reach. Trust me, when you get started and you start to put things into motion and the snowball effect starts to take place, you'll quickly see that building a property portfolio is something that can accelerate at a fast pace. So you may start out 
slowly, 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 and then it suddenly rises sharply because, as I mentioned, the snowball effect kicks in. So if you imagine all these rental incomes coming in and you save them, within a few months' time, you're going to have enough deposit, enough funds to then buy another property. Obviously, there's a lot of other methods. There's a lot of other strategies and ways to add funds and to make funds. And there's a lot of other ways to raise money, raise capital, to invest and buy to let property. But if you combine those with saving rental income, then you can quickly build a buy to let portfolio. As I mentioned at the start, if you feel you're stuck or you're not sure which route to take, or you'll maybe you're lacking confidence, then just go to my description, click the link, and you'll be able to see how I may be able to help you out. Now, to be able to supplement your current income, to be able to live off the income from your rental properties, you're going to have to have a level of discipline. What I see for most people is they'll get to one, two, maybe three rental properties. Then what they'll do is they'll take out the profits from those rental properties to supplement um, part of their lifestyle, maybe driving around in a flash car or maybe using that for more holidays and things like that which is absolutely fine. However, you want to get all the way to supplementing your full income to cover all of your bills and everything, then you're gonna to have to have some kind of discipline put in place so that you do not dip your hands in your pot and you continue to invest in property until you reach that point. Now, I know by this stage, there will be people, some people thinking that, yes, well, interest rates have gone up a lot, so I can simply put my money into a bank account and earn probably 5%, depending on when you're watching this video, and I can do this without any either, any issues without bad tenants, without being involved in property. Now the answer is yes, you can. However, what people forget is the difference between earning 10% and 5% is massive. Also, if you put your money into a savings account rather than property, then that savings account's not gonna gain you any capital appreciation. It's gonna make you a small amount in income and interest per year. However, with property, not only are you making income from the rentals, you are also gaining capital appreciation every time that property goes up in value. And not only that, you are gaining the capital appreciation on the value of the property, not the original investment that you put in. So for example, if you put 30,000 pounds in for your deposit and stamp duty and whatnot, for a 100,000 pound property, you're actually controlling that 100,000 pounds worth of property. So. When that house goes up in value by say 10,000 pounds to 110,000, you've made 10,000 pounds. You've made the gain on the full 100,000 rather than the 30,000. So if you were to put 30,000 in stocks and shares, for example, and that company um, increased by 10%, then you'd make 10% of 30,000 pounds, okay? Whereas in property, you would make 10% of the 100,000 pounds. Now that's the difference between investing in property and investing in other assets such as savings or stocks and shares. Now property really is one of the best investments that you can ever make. There's always a demand for property. The population is always increasing. You get the best of both worlds with capital appreciation and monthly cash flow. Rents are only ever gonna go up. Property is only ever gonna go up. The only thing that's holding most people back is lack of knowledge or lack of confidence. They don't know where to start or they're afraid that they might lose out on money because if they make mistakes, they're gonna lose money. If they get it wrong, then they're gonna put them off property and they're gonna wish they'd done something else. However, all of these issues can be banished just by going out, learning, educating yourself, learning from somebody that's already done it. I've helped hundreds of people to get into property. I've worked one-on-one -on -one with dozens and dozens of people. People who were afraid to start, they had the money, they had the initial capital, but they didn't know how to put that to best use. They didn't know how to scale a portfolio. Yes, they may have known the basics about buy to let, but there was things that they weren't sure about. Now, by working with somebody who's already done it, they were able to inform them. They were able to make sure that they didn't make any mistakes. They were able to help that person to quickly achieve the goals that they had set themselves to get started in property rather than pondering, rather than moping about, coming up with excuses like, uh, what if a tenant trashes my house? What if the interest rates keep going up? What if the housing market crashes? These excuses have been around for decades, okay? As with anything else, the property market is forever changing, it's forever moving. Doesn't mean something really bad's gonna happen. Doesn't mean that you should be fearful. Doesn't mean you should listen to others. So just take that into consideration when starting out on your property investing journey. Now, as I said at the start, 
I don't currently live off my rental income. I could if I wanted to. I could just take all the profits that my properties make and that would pay for all of my um, bills, outgoings, car, residential mortgage and things like that. However, if like myself, you're always striving for more, you want a better life for yourself and your family, then there's absolutely no reason why you should stop. Just keep going, whether that be with property or anything else. Now, I hope this quick video has helped. Hope it's given you a better understanding of what it takes and what's involved in using property to replicate your income or to subsidize your current lifestyle. If you have enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up as it really helps a small channel like mine to grow. And as I mentioned at the start, if you feel like you may need my help, just go to the description, click the link and watch the short video.